Welcome everyone to Trend Talks Life. I am your host, Aaron Tomey, and today we're talking to Trend Micro security engineer, Mark Tobago. Mark, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. I, I thought this was going to be, you know, a this is your life kind of review. So I'm, I'm rocking some of the legacy merch. I have the old trend hat. I have an old trend game day shirt on. So hopefully uh, no one's too harsh on me for not having the new up to date stuff. But <laughs> yes, we are really going to get into it today. Spill all the secrets all about Mark. Um, but why don't we just start with you sharing a bit about your current role here at Trend Micro? Sure. So currently I am a sales engineer out of the Eastern region, right? Mapping to some account managers. I did two summers abroad. I'll call them for Trends AWS Alliances program under Fernando Cardoso. And then with the reconsolidation of the regions, kind of the reevaluation of Trend as a company, the direction going forward, I'm happy to be a kind of reeled back into the, the sales engineering world. Well, Mark, I know that Trend was your first job out of college, similar to myself. How did you first come to be a Trender? So that's actually pretty interesting because in retrospect, I would say I managed to do almost everything wrong in the job application process coming out of university. I finished a degree in electrical engineering, actually, with uh, an emphasis in systems design. So chip design, things like that, uh, FPGAs, etc. And coming out of school, it was hard for me to find opportunities in that space. So I shot out my resume to a bunch of different locations and my manager at the time of hiring me um, reached out to me. And when he had trend in the email signature, I didn't know what that company was <laughs> because I didn't recall ever, you know, in my objective statements or in my cover letters using the words trend or trend micro at all. It turns out when he attached my resume at the bottom that I had sent a resume to a headhunting company <laughs> under a completely irrelevant job title, wrong company, and he had received that as part of, I'm sure, a list of candidates. And he liked the work I had been doing in a completely unrelated field and liked me enough to call me in for an interview. So now you've been here for almost seven years now. What's been a major career highlight for you? So I think it's been the the fostering of some of what I was, you know, maybe a little more hesitant to do starting out and that leading into greater opportunities, right? At, when I was first picked up by Trend, and you can ask anyone around the Jersey City office to verify this, they'll all call it to be true. Um, I, I kept up to myself a lot. Uh, one out of obviously the nervousness of first big job, learning all of this new material. And then secondarily, just being unsure of how to express myself or understand where I could grow in the space. And again, I have to thank the leaders and the managers I've had for encouraging me to dig into um, some of my communication skills, I guess the stuff that got me hired in the first place, to explore those avenues at Trend. Um, a few, a couple years ago, uh, kind of pre-pandemic, I had the chance to present on a stage for the first time at the AWS Summit in New York. And for me, at least, that was huge, getting to be in front of an audience, talking through the material that I had spent years learning about, and then making it fun in a way that connected to the audience, I hope. And from there, steamrolling that into other opportunities to explore how I communicate in the tech space, whether that's undertaking creative projects like some of the demo walkthroughs I have that I made as part of my time with the AWS Alliances team, those guided walkthroughs, those instructional course-like materials that are externally facing. Obviously, you do, I'm sure, a fair share of editing and curation of material to do this series, kind of exploring that space as well, learning the creative process from both uh, behind the camera and behind the screen was huge. And then all of that connecting into most recently being a part of the Risk to Resilience World Tour stops. You know, I'm happy that I got to do my hometown stop in New York and then an additional stop up in Boston. Not too crazy about Boston. They can keep that on record. But, you know, I love that opportunity to present, talk trend. I'm a proud New Jersey and that's why I had to bring it up. But being able to get in front of 
increased, you know, audiences, both in number, in title, while getting to stay true to myself and how I like to communicate and present material. So that combination of all right, fostering what I had internally in terms of how I like to communicate and then combining it with the knowledge I've been allowed to learn at my own pace over time, I think sums it all up. Yeah, mentors are so important. And especially you mentioned, you know, when you were first starting, you kept yourself very quiet. So to go from that point to having the environment to where now you're, I don't know if you would say comfortable, but you push yourself to get on stage, speak in front of, you know, other people, your peers, um, customers, uh, companies that we work with. And speaking at cybersecurity events or any event is, not easy and uh you mentioned your demo videos and one of the first demo videos i actually saw of yours was doing a product walkthrough in the time it took to make pour over coffee and you actually had the video of the pour over coffee in the coffee in the top corner how do you how do you approach putting together these demo videos or these stage presentations for events in a way that fits with your style Oh, geez. Well, I guess my style, I hope, has evolved a little bit from that. I still love coffee the same way, but uh, <laughs> going back and thinking about that video, at least, and going from there, at the time, my manager had asked me to create a demo walkthrough that was eye-catching. All right, I looked at the reference material, and obviously I had a very... Um, avant-garde interpretation of eye-catching but to think to myself okay i want to talk about speed of deployment of the trend offering i want to talk about how quickly it comes out of the box well configured and how much right how or how little configuration it needs on top of it for me what's the best way to express that measure of time <laughs> so when it came to making that video or making the videos I made for alliances or the presentations I've delivered recently, a lot of them center on making material that I would want to sit through. And obviously that seems very rudimentary, right? Don't make something boring. Don't make something you wouldn't like. But oftentimes we can get mixed up or, you know, swept up in the desire to get across so much specific or niche or trend branded material that we lose sight of the greater messaging and how that messaging can be compelling to an audience or finding the commonalities or common ground that make that messaging effective. So in making that coffee driven walkthrough of, I think it was cloud one application security at the time, actually, or in making the talks that I have recently that are a little bit off the beaten path, uh, I try to abstract the messaging and move it into right, something more common, whether that's coffee. I think I gave a presentation once about file storage security and baseball. <laughs> and I've also, I think, talked about file storage security with regards to motorsport. So when it comes to distilling those topics uh, into stuff that I would want to sit through from an audience perspective, it's finding that quirky little niche analogy and hopefully making it interesting. And then from there, covering it in that layer of uh, trend messaging. So making it interesting for myself first. And I hope the audience you know, follows along afterwards. I think it's easy to forget sometimes that we all have lives outside of cybersecurity. And I think that's what you're kind of touching on is baseball, motorsports, coffee, we all live in the cybersecurity world. We breathe it, eat it every single day. And if someone is using their time to come to a presentation, yes, they want to learn about cybersecurity, but that's all they hear about. So how can you differentiate something or put a spin on something that's going to bring in an aspect of their life that they normally don't get to explore during the workday? And that can pique their interest and also speak to the message that you're getting across in the cybersecurity topic. And to be fair to the people who hold me accountable for all of this, I do tend to you know, run some draft of all of this by them. I want to make sure my machinations aren't spiraling too wildly out of control uh, right before I get on stage. But again, that just speaks to right, the, the soft guidance. And I think 
the the leadership that sits above me, but obviously still very flat across trend, where I can get input and feedback from different departments and different titles about the material I create or I'm about to present. And right, obviously with their best intentions in mind, overlapping with mine to make sure that we have a cohesive message that gets you know, across the value that we want to bring um, to market from a trend perspective. Hopefully with just a little, you know, a little zest peel of, uh, of myself mixed in there. Mark, thank you so much for joining me today on Trend Talks Life. I really enjoyed chatting with you, getting to know you, hearing about the magic of the process of these. The madness behind uh, the process. <laughs> <laughs> it's more a more mad science lab than I think magician's castle back here. So, No, I think we all appreciate it. We appreciate your creativity and the unique spin you put on things. And that's why you're still here after seven years. Thank you again for joining me. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much for having me.